Okay, on the, on the boom, we, we used to tilt the boom with a cylinder. I uh, had a lever on, on the shaft itself uh, and, and tilted it with a lever. When, when we were doing that, we were only getting, at best, 45 degrees in each direction. Not really, probably not even that good. Uh, since then, we have gone to this rotary actuator. It's, it's mounted on this end of the boom. We weld a little stub shaft into the end of the pipe because that, the pipe that it pivots on is, is alive. You know, that's where the, where the high pressure water comes in. This mounts on the other side of that box with a Lovejoy coupling. Obviously, this isn't the right one, but. Just put a long set screw. <laughs> Uh, this is, is a lot better system. It, it makes the makes the wash uh, a lot more adjustable to, to fine tune to exactly what you want to do. Now, to tilt 90 degrees in the front of the vehicle, I don't recommend at all. Some customers are just adamant about it. They want it to tilt 90. Fine, tilt it 90 degrees. You're you're not going to wash the car as good as if you would only tilt it at 70 degrees or something like that because it, it, you're going to contact the car longer when you're tilted less. You, you, go, you, you, know, you tilt it at 90 degrees and there's a Corvette in the bay, you're going you're gonna to touch that car for two seconds when it gets all the way to the bottom because you're going to be blowing it over the top of it. So I, I say keep it, keep it tilted you know, about like that, and let it spray, that way it'll start reaching out to the hood and then washing as it comes down. Yeah, it has actually two adjustments. These are mechanical stops, now you can leave these set out, they're capable of 90 degrees when they leave the plant as they're set. Now you can set the mechanical stop so nobody can you know, easily go in there and, and you know, make it tilt more if you want it to be less. Uh, you have uh, this solenoid here on the bottom of the, the air side of the manifold on the low pressure box has two regulators on it. One is to tilt one direction, one to tilt the other direction. So, you can just adjust, increase or decrease the pressure, whatever you, to get, you know, what you want. Uh, if you're going all the way to the stops, you can contact the stops, but don't let it hammer the stops real hard. If you, you want it to tilt 90, fine. You don't need 80 pounds of air to make that happen. Uh, you know, do it just until just, you barely hear it, contact the stop, and that's enough. If you crank the air up, and this was a big problem on the, on the cylinder tilt, uh, the customer wanted more tilt, more tilt, more air, more air, more air, and they, they crank it up and they'd end up bending the boom shaft from hammering it so hard. Uh, here you're not going to damage the shaft doing that, you're going to damage this, and this is very expensive. <laughs> you don't want to buy one of these, you know, if you don't have to. So uh, just take care of it, don't, don't let it hammer those stops. Okay. The boom has one of these aluminum pulleys with a belt on it on both sides. Uh, we have stops only on the same side as the cabinet. This belt is something that we have changed uh, from original, the original ones had a, a steel strands in it. This belt, we had problems with once, once you got some age on it, you start getting cracks and, and it wasn't a stainless stranded wire, it was, it was steel. So it'd start rusting, then we had some breakage problems. This is Kevlar stranded. So chemicals, it doesn't matter what you dump on it, water. I have yet to see one of these break. This thing is rated for like probably 10 times the weight that we're actually using. Now we don't, this, just gravity is what pulls the boom down. We turn the motor on, but we do not power it down. So if, if, if you were to stick a sawhorse or something underneath that, hit the button down, when it hit that, the belt's just gonna go slack. Okay, so we do not power it down. We used to have a continuous loop and a pulley at the top and the bottom uh, where it was powered down. Oh, those were, were a little bit of a chore to, to maintain those because the belt tension was so important. And if you run one tighter than the other, one's going to slip off. It was problems. This is working a lot better. Now, when we did that, we had to go, the bearings we use on the back side of those boxes that goes up and down the guide shaft are actually oversized. We have a one inch shaft and it's a one and one thirty second bearing that we have made for us. So you have, have some, some leeway in there where it'll, it'll just come down real easy. 
whenever you're adjusting these, because you have stops on one, on one side, you'll probably see if I, if I drop that boom just a little bit and get it off the stops, that end's gonna be lower than that end because when it hits those stops, then that other one kind of cranks up a little bit. Uh, when you're making your adjustments, uh, just quicker and easier, do it on the side, away from the proxies. Uh, it just makes it quicker, a quick, you see the results a little bit faster. But usually out in the field, unless you're replacing the belt, you know, you're not gonna have to make an adjustment to a belt that, that, you, know, that you haven't changed. Uh, that, that, that's set from here and you shouldn't have to ever mess with that. And the way these work, there's a key on the shaft and a keyway cut on the shaft and a, and a key in here. This has a tapered bore in it. The, the bushing is split. Whenever you tighten these bolts, it squeezes that into the taper and locks down on the shaft. Uh, if you do change a belt, you may see, because we buy this on a roll, it's gonna have some memory. So it may wanna wind up all on one side of the pulley. The only thing that you are concerned with at that point is that when it's all the way up, that that belt is right in the center of that pulley. Okay, I don't care what the second wrap is, it doesn't matter because eventually it'll all be in the center. If it, you know, it's just, it's right, it's just as long as that last wrap, when you're, you look up in the unit, that belt should be dead in the middle or real close to dead in the center of that. Uh, what's underneath it doesn't matter. I don't care where that is because eventually it'll all be in the middle. It just has a little bit of memory from, from being in that roll. Now this solenoid I mentioned a minute ago is, is for the tilt. It's the only place we use it. You come in through the center and you have two exhaust ports. You tilt one direction and then it'll exhaust out one port, tilt in the other direction, exhaust out the other port. If these start to leak, I recommend just changing it. If it starts leaking through the exhaust ports, uh, now you can, with limited success, take that snap ring out, pull the spool out. If you see debris on it, you might, you might get lucky. Uh, clean it off real good, put some grease on it, pop it back in there, and, and see if it, if it works. But a lot of times it doesn't work, but sometimes it does. So you can give it a shot. Uh, I don't know why, why you can't really rebuild them that great, but I just the easiest thing, just change it. About five pages back from the beginning of this booklet, there's an illustration of, of this box. This is what we call our, we call it the low pressure box. Uh, this is what house all the low pressure solenoids on the gantry. Every one of them is in here. On the left side, all of this is your product. The top three are for your triple shine, your three different colors. One below that is for tire cleaner. The bottom one, both of those are for pre-soak. So that way we're able to shut off the side pre-soak, you know, independent of the top. That way when we lower the boom in the front and the back of the vehicle, only the boom will be delivering at that time. This is the air manifold. We have a, uh, a dryer regulator mounted on the pump stand now that you can regulate the pressure. It also will get the moisture out of, out of the air. Uh, you hook it up to here. Uh, you're going to set that probably around 70 pounds or so. Uh, the top two here are for, uh, for your pre-soak, top pre-soak, side pre-soak, tire cleaner. This is, you have a single airline for all three colors of triple shine. The uh, foam generators that are up top are all plumbed together. You pump in the air mixes with each of the three colors making making your foam. You'll see one here with no regulator and what that is for is for an air purge. Uh, when it's when it's cold when you uh, set your thermostat to whatever you know 35 degrees or whatever you have it set at the unit will in between washes and throughout the night will purge uh, blow air through the lines to try and clear the lines to prevent to help prevent it freezing. Again, here's, here's the, the solenoid that I talked about a little bit earlier uh, for the tilt. You have an adjustment for each direction. What's that? No, it's on, on the regulator. You just pull the, 
pull the cap up and then you can screw it in to increase the pressure, screw it out to decrease the pressure. Now we used to have regulators on all of these. Uh, leaking was always a problem with them. Uh, the Procon pumps that are on the pump stands are adjustable. There's a little acorn nut on the side of that pump. You take that acorn nut off and you can adjust the pressure there. So we've opted to take those regulators out and adjust the pressure at the pump. No, this is product. All this is product. All liquid on this side. So your product will come here, your liquid will come there, your air comes from right here. All of our wiring, all of our hosing, you know, plumbing, everything is color coded. We always use the same color wire. The uh, schematic mentions the, the wire color. Uh, we always use a green hose for tire cleaner. So, I mean, that's something that we've, we've carried over from the self-serve department. Uh, it makes it easy to troubleshoot a problem, a lot easier to, you, know, you don't actually have to pull the wire if you know that the tan wire, you know, runs to this here and it runs down here. So all we do, send it one signal, it opens the air and the, and the product solenoids at the same time, it begins to deliver. This valve right here for the pre-soak, if you read the tag, it would say, it has a working pressure of 0 to 116 PSI. I know for a fact that it will not work at 116 pounds. If you crank the, the pressure up trying to deliver more pre-soak or, or get a different mix, what you're going to do is you're going to end up locking up that solenoid. You get even, I've seen it lock up at 90 pounds, even though it says that it should handle it. So you want as a starting point on all of your low pressure pumps, you want it at 50 pounds. What would you say is a reasonable max? 70. 70. I see no reason to ever go over that. Now, and, and usually you're not going to need that. Uh, you, may, you may want to jack it up five pounds or so. You can, you can adjust what, the way it's delivering by, by adding or, or taking out air, you know, a little less air, a little more air to get it to do what you want it to do. Now on the gantry, we can, we can get up and, and, uh, and look at the high pressure box as it is on the, on the machine. Okay, this is what we call the high pressure box. We, we send our high pressure water through this, this one inch stainless pipe into this manifold. Uh, you'll see that it's got a, a big valve, a 458P DEMA, that is for our rocker panel. When the rocker panel comes on, we're delivering pretty much as much water as that pump will put out. We, we've got 10 1508 tips is what comes on at standard. So that would deliver, you know, like 40 gallons of water. The pump puts out 35. So we're, we're pushing a lot of water through here. Now, uh, then you've got two smaller ones here. One is for the, the side oscillating high pressure, and then one's for the boom. Again, when you get, when the boom comes down, only the boom will be delivering at that time, so you're not just wasting water out here on the side. Uh, there's also a check valve right here, and this is where you're gonna hook up your spot-free rent. You're gonna deliver it through the same tips as you would the high pressure. Uh, I don't really, see lots of problems, probably only have ever actually needed to replace that check valve on one machine it comes to memory, you know, I, it's, it's not something that, that you're going to have to do re very regularly. check valve keeps the regular water going through the spot. Well, it keeps, yeah, it keeps the high pressure water from backing up into that low pressure okay. line. Yeah. There's another check valve here, and this, this black tube right here is what comes from the purge solenoid in the low pressure box. So whenever it goes into purge, it'll first open that solenoid and send air into this manifold, and then we will open these up one at a time. And then we run through, you know, all of all of the functions. It'll push air through there and try and try and get all the, the liquid out of the lines the best that we can. Now we did have a problem, me and Justin had on on a, a 458. And one way to see, we were having a problem with a pump uh, cavitating. It was like, it was delivering, but there was something not right. We tried a, an unloader, uh, the first thing you're going to suspect. That didn't work, so 
We ended up taking the, the guts out of the stem of this, took the plunger out, put it back together and turned it on and the problem went away, meaning that this valve was not, was not opening all the way and uh, it was causing us a problem. So well, you, can, you can do that on any of these. If you, you start seeing a problem like that, take the stem out, pull the plunger and spring it back together, turn it on. If the problem goes away, then you, you say, okay, then you have a mechanical problem with this. You know, we did the, the electrical check Anytime any of these solenoids, no matter where they are, uh, when they're energized, the screw or the top of the stem will be magnetized. So that's a, that's a quick test. You turn a function on, put a screwdriver. Don't use a magnetic screwdriver, <laughs> but use a screwdriver and uh, you can... Anything, anything metal. I like these paper clips to set it there and leave. Oh, okay. If you ever take <laughs> take this part out right here, uh, there's a sleeve in here. Uh, there is a plunger, and then it has a ring in there that keeps it centered in the bore. Don't think that there's your problem because you see a split in that ring. It's not a seal. All it is is, is a ring that helps keep it centered in the bore. That's all it's for. Cause I get calls all, oh, I found the problem, man. There's a cut in this seal. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs>